Freaking weather. I think I'm going to do the video in here again today because the weather outside is frightful and the greenhouse is so delightful and well since we have nowhere to go because of the coronavirus uh, let it snow let it snow let it snow Welcome to my new man cave. This is the greenhouse, which is a great place to be on a cloudy, snowy day in April. Yes, I, this weather is just crazy. Ever since I installed the panels, it's been cloudy and just really goofy weather. Anyways, that's not what I'm here to complain about or even talk to you about. I want to talk about inverters, which I'm sure everyone is just tickled about. Um, an inverter, by the way, is just a fancy term for a electronic device that converts or inverts DC, direct current, to AC, alternating current. AC is what the world uses to consume power. So before you can use electricity or send your watts, your excess watts out onto the grid, you need to invert it. From DC to AC and the rule of thumb was years ago back in the old days was to right size the inverter to the size of your solar array or get it somewhere close but not undersize it meaning that the inverter would be less capable than the panels so our old system that we've had installed for 16 years is a 4 kilowatt DC array with a five kilowatt inverter. So that it never clips, it would never not produce the power that you could get out of the solar panels. So that five kilowatt inverter is important in this whole scheme of things here because transformers, which everyone has, if you live in an urban area, you're probably sharing a transformer with a bunch of neighbors, or if you live in a rural area, such as Joe and I, we have our own transformer. La -ti -da. It's a small transformer, however, and it's only capable of 10 kVA or 10 kilowatts. So what that means to me from a solar producer standpoint is, is that if I want to sell my surplus power back out onto the grid, I cannot go over 10 kilowatts. And since we already have a 5 kilowatt inverter, I can only add a 5 kilowatt inverter to give me a total of 10. Now, these transformers actually could allow you to do more than that, but, you know, that's the rules. Uh, my Energy, who is our electric utility, says that if we go over 10, we'd have to upsize the transformer. And that's understandable. You know, one thing, living in a rural area, because everyone has transformers, it is more expensive for your utility to provide power to... A rural area because everybody has to have their own transformer so that's the bottom line and I figured that to offset the cost of our electric vehicles I was hoping to add about six kilowatts to offset that annual load and but now if I'm limited to a five kilowatt inverter I'm not be, be able to get to the level that I really wanted to get to but that's not the case and Scott from Viking Electric came out and said, well, that's no big deal. We'll put in 6.4 worth of solar panels and you'll still use a 5 kilowatt inverter so that you're not maxing or going beyond the limits of the transformer. And I thought, okay, but how's that going to work? Because I'm used to looking at solar charts on a nice sunny day with our old system, you get a nice sine wave. At the start of the day, the panels are offset to the angle of the sun, and the sun's got to go through more atmosphere, so it's not producing as much power. You get up to about midday, and it's, you know, the solar production is peaking. 
and but it's not clipping and then it goes down on the other side you get this nice beautiful looking sine wave for a completely sunny day when they occur and i thought well if i installed a 6.4 kilowatt array with a 5 kilowatt inverter i'm going to get to the middle of the day and i'm going to flatline it's going to be a, a clipping that occurs and sure enough that's what happens and it took some convincing but i've actually figured out that yeah this makes sense to do this. And here's the reason why. There's actually a couple of reasons. The first one is, is that I looked at our stats for 2019 and we had 44 sunny days, completely sunny days, out of 365 days out of the year. That means most days you've got either some clouds or a high thin cirrus, some obscuration of the sun, so that clipping doesn't play into it as much as one would think with only 44 completely sunny days. And the second thing is, is that because you've added more solar panels, you're making more watts in the morning and afternoon before it clips. And even when it is clipping, that flat line you're getting is consistent uh, many, many hours of five kilowatts versus if I only had a five kilowatt array, it's only going to peak up at the top. And I thought, well, okay, let's see if we can verify this. So I got on the computer and I used a program called PV Watts. PV Watts is a program developed by the NREL, the National Renewable Energy Lab. And it's used here in the United States to accurately calculate on an annual basis what you might obtain as far as solar output. So I thought, well, let's take some what-if scenarios and plug it into this calculator to see if we can really find out how much more power we could produce by oversizing the array and undersizing the inverter. So I went in there and did some calculations and found that if I had a solar array that was at 5 kilowatts and upped it to 6.4 and left the inverter at 5 kilowatts, we'd produce about 2 megawatts more per year. And that's a sizable amount of, uh, of output. And that's about $240 worth of output in a single year. And I calculated that by adding 1.4 kilowatts of more solar, I could actually pay off those panels in five to seven years. And I get my production up to a level that would help offset the cost of our uh, energy that we consume with our electric vehicles. So it's really a win-win. You keep the cost of the inverters down, you prevent yourself from having to upsize your transformer, and you produce more energy, which gets you to the level where I wanted to be. So in a nutshell, it really does make sense to undersize the inverter. And typically what they'll tell you is, is that anywhere from 20 to 30% is a good number. In our particular case, our solar panels are oversized by 28%. Now you could go even higher than that, but then it's a diminishing returns on investment. So we're kind of in the, the ballpark of where we want to be as far as maximizing our uh, production versus our investment. So I just wanted to share that with you today. I found it really fascinating. So thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll catch you in the next journal entry. Bye-bye.